Greetings. Welcome back to my garage. Happy Friday. Hope you had a fantastic week with you and your families at the houses. Uh, we'll get into in a few minutes the answer to the question I asked on Tuesday, which was where does matter come from? Where does that corn seed get all the ingredients to make the rest of that big corn stalk later on? Uh, where do trees, how do they grow from a pine cone to a, a full on tree? Um, we'll get into that in a second. I want to start by talking about uh, an update on two of our online features we've been working on, which would be uh, Epic Books, kind of newer this week, and IXL. So Epic Books this week was a hope that you would log on, click around in there, do some experimenting, and I had eight students um, who were clicking around in there. Uh, so thank you, Tanya, Olivia, Logan, Haley, Evie, Eris Dawson, and Annabelle. Uh, and, uh, Olivia, I think, takes the cake. She was on there for hours and hours, so hope she's finding lots of good stuff. And now on to IXL. That's the platform we are more familiar with. That's the one we practiced and, and worked with before um, they shut down schools for the year. Uh, so we had 11 folks on that this week. Uh, Logan tops the pile with 755 questions answered uh, at the time that I taped this. Um, but uh, Eris and Nathan, Haley, Gabe, Leighton, Dawson, Jude, Evie, Tani and Annabelle also logging in this week. So 11 of you, thank you. That's about half the class. Um, I want to say a couple words about IXL. Uh, I can check just about everything that's happening in IXL. I can see if you've practiced a skill. I can see if you are what's called proficient at a skill. And I can see if you've mastered a skill. Um, I want you to make sure we don't lose our minds on IXL because it can get super frustrating. You go through uh, a bunch of questions, getting them right, getting them right. You get up into the 80s, and then IXL decides to turn up the difficulty on you. Uh, once you reach into the 80s, then IXL says you are proficient at that skill. Proficient means you're good to go. You know how to do that skill. They haven't given you the mastered yet because they take that skill and then they add some other pieces to it to make it a little bit tougher. Um, so some folks will get up into the 90s, 96 and then you get one wrong and then it bounces you way back down and you start pulling your hair out and throwing computers around don't do it i'm telling you take a deep breath i am a hundred percent fine if you're up in the 80s you are proficient you can move on okay so don't let uh, the 96 and 97 and 100 uh, drive you absolutely stir crazy i excel not meant to be a torture device it's meant to be a means that we can practice specific skills that's what it is. And lastly, I had 14 students last week were able to get into their email, follow the link, and take the Friday quiz. So far today, I've got four so far today, so thank you guys for getting on in and answering that, and I'm hoping more will roll in over the weekend. I'm hoping that that personal email, when you log into Office 360, will be something you check multiple times a week. Anytime you have a question, you can email me directly. Um, and I'll get right back to you. So I want to get into our question of the week, which was where is that matter coming from? Now, in order for me to show you how it all works, I'm going to need a whiteboard and I'm going to need some markers. So let me get my whiteboard out. Okay, so out in the air, we breathe in, uh, we've got CO2, carbon dioxide, and I'll draw a CO2, we'll call uh, a big black one carbon, um, and then We'll call these red ones oxygen. A little smaller red ones will be oxygen. So uh, when the CO2 molecules are cruising around, they're hooked together kind of like this. One big carbon and two oxygens. C, one carbon, O, two. Two oxygens, one carbon. Uh, and they cruise around out there. Now, plants will use this CO2 but they also need water to do it. Okay, so um, water they'll need, they get from the ground, and water is a hydrogen or two, and one of the oxygens that we have over here. So those guys, this is kind of the, this is the, what a molecule looks like. Again, one oxygen, two hydrogen, which makes H2, two hydrogens, and O, one O. 
So here's our O, here's our hydrogens. Here's our carbon, here's our two oxygens. Okay, so a plant has got this magical ability called photosynthesis to take carbon dioxide and water and mix it with a little bit of sunlight and it can make what's called glucose. It's going to make a simple sugar and from that glucose uh, it can make cellulose. Okay, so here's what it needs. Uh, when the plant goes shopping to make glucose, it needs six of these and six of those. And so if I drew one, two, three, four, five, and six of those, put my carbon away for a second, and then each one of those has two of the oxygens on it. And then, I'll hook these in together in a second, uh, and then it needs six of those as well to make some glucose. And so we have six of the oxygens, and then some hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12. Ooh, okay. So let me hook these guys together. Ooh, okay, so now the plant's sitting out there, got its leaves out, and it is uh, soaking up some sunlight, and it uses water from the ground that it gets up from its roots and it uses some CO2 out of the air. Atmospheric carbon is what we call it. So now that it's got all of its ingredients together, it's gonna to make some glucose. So the glucose is shaped like a hexagon. Roughly in the middle. And each one of these spots has a big carbon. I won't get, uh, I'm going to get a little sciencey on you, but not super duper. And then there's one more carbon hanging out over here. And that takes care of one, two, three, four, five, six of the carbons, which is so it needed all those carbons to make that glucose. And now it's going to need some of the oxygens. And it takes one of the oxygens right up here, up to the top. And then it takes a single oxygen off of most of these ones. That gives us six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then it needs these little blue ones, which are the hydrogen. And when it's all said and done, we're gonna have a little hydrogen off this guy. And then one of these each here. And let's see how many that gives us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that takes care of all of these hydrogens. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Um, so we've got all the carbons taken care of, we've got all the hydrogens taken care of, but only one, two, three, four, five, six of the oxygens. So that leaves one, two, three, four, five, those are all gone. So the only thing it didn't use when it made its glucose was those pairs of oxygen. 
So what that ends up becoming, when, when the tree or the plant or the leaf is all done making glucose, um, which is making a plant, which is making, you know, part of the plant, it's done with and doesn't need anymore two little oxygens, or O2. And it's, it, it finishes up and it leaves you six of those pairs. So, uh, when we get the idea that plants breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen, kind of yes and no. They don't have lungs like we do or gills like a fish, uh, but they do pull these ingredients together, use what they need to make a glucose molecule, and when they're done, they have left over a bunch of just straight up oxygen that it sends back out through the leaves. And so, uh, as far as we're concerned, yes, trees give off oxygen, but more importantly, uh, the tree is pulling the carbon out of the air that's already out there and leaving behind the oxygen. Sorry if that got a little sciencey for you there. Uh, I don't know what came over me. I haven't been near a whiteboard in weeks, and maybe it was the smell of the markers that did it, but uh, just if you walk away knowing that our plants that we planted, uh, as well as trees and seaweed and the whole works out there, they take the CO2 out of the air, they pull that carbon piece off to help make glucose. And so yes, the matter that the plants are made of is literally coming from thin air. They're pulling carbon out of the air, mixing it with some water and some sunlight, and boom, making some glucose. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty magical process, uh, and if we could invent a machine that did that, if we could take a machine that just used solar power, water, and air, and then made vegetables, um, we wouldn't need to farm anymore, right? We would be, we'd be doing something amazing. So uh, plants are pretty cool, and that's where they get their matter from. Have a wonderful weekend. Until next week, I too.